Hey everybody, Scott Spritzer here at DocSports.com and welcome to the update for Thursday, June 6, 2019. Free pick coming up in just a moment, plus another NFL thumbnail sketch. We'll get to all of that in a second. First, a quick note, if you've yet to become a member over at DocSports.com, just want to give it a trial run, real cool way to do so. You click on the link below this video, get set up for a free $60 account. Use those free 60 bucks on any of my daily packages or anybody else over at DocSports.com. It's as simple as that. Again, a free $60 account, consider it a trial run and get started by clicking on the link below the video. All right, here's what we got going on Thursday, by the way. We've got two plays. We've got a heavy hitter in Major League Baseball, and we've got a six-unit elite-level WNBA side on Thursday, first one of the season. Now, as far as the WNBA is concerned, we mentioned we were going to wait about a week or so before we got involved, and we did on Tuesday. Cash right out of the blocks. First game is a win with the Seattle Storm. We passed yesterday, just one game, didn't like it. There are three games on Thursday and one of those happens to be a big six-unit elite level play. We like to call them six-unit knockouts. It'll be available 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific on Thursday at DocSports.com. Also, as I mentioned, Major League Baseball heavy hitter going on Thursday, available at the same time as the WNBA play. That'll be at 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. Go grab it over at DocSports.com. Looking to rebound from yesterday's Major League Baseball. In fact, here on the free pick report, as we said, Peacock doesn't give up home runs. He didn't. As we said Seattle can't manufacture runs. They got to hit the long ball. Well, first five innings, they weren't manufacturing runs. They had two. After that, though, they cut loose on the Houston bullpen. I think it was uh, three or four Houston relievers who gave up five home runs to Seattle. Ugly, ugly performance. Look to get right back in the win column with our free pick. And again, we got that heavy hitter going on over at DocSports.com on Thursday. NBA last night, couldn't have been any happier. Toronto uh, shuts down Golden State, wins 123 to 109. And uh, we cash again. We are now on, we're two and one this year in the NBA Finals. We are five and two the last two finals, and now 44 and 24 with our last 68 NBA Finals releases. And yes, I will be in action on Friday. We'll post that play on Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. As we sit here and talk, the Golden State Warriors laying five and a half. Both Clay Thompson and Kevin Durant listed as questionable for Friday. I'm sure we'll know more by tomorrow's video and we'll update anything we can find, but we will be in action on Friday as they play game four up in the Bay Area. And again, we've been red hot in the NBA Finals, 44 and 24 with the last 68, 43 and 26 with the last 69 NBA plays overall over the past couple of months. Don't miss out on Friday. And again, don't miss out on that six unit WNBA play on Thursday. All right, before I get to the free pick for Thursday, we're going to jump back into the thumbnail sketches in the NFL. And on this particular show, we're going to talk about the Detroit Lions. Over under wins total for the most part, I've seen six and a half. Couple of sevens out there, but I haven't seen those around two, uh, made two available uh, for a while now. We'll talk about all that in just a second. As far as this team is concerned, listen, the offense doesn't look bad, man. You got nice skilled players surrounding Matthew Stafford. You got an offensive line that's decent. And you know what? I think a lot of people would be shocked to know that uh, no quarterback got pressured less on a percentage level on dropbacks than Matthew Stafford did last year for the Detroit. Lions. I think he'll be well protected again for the most part. Run the game a little bit, hit those targets. As I said, he's got nice skill position players. They added to the mix with a big target at tight end. The kid out of Iowa, Hawkinson. Listen, he can not only go out and make a few catches and be another big target in this offense through the air, but he's a good run blocker. At least he was in college. The issue is going to be whether or not uh, he outplays or outperforms another player that was available for the Detroit Lions at that point of the draft, which is Ed Oliver. And I'm sure the Detroit Detroit fans are not going to let the organization forget about passing on Oliver and taking Hawkinson if the kid out of Iowa doesn't turn out to be a real player uh, for the Lions. So we'll see how that plays out. But the offense, not bad. Defense, not bad up front, but I don't like the secondary. Couldn't force any turnovers last year. They were horrible forcing turnovers. I don't see a big change in 2019. I don't like the secondary. In fact, at times, I'm not going to be liking this back seven whatsoever. And so that's the issue. The defense, whether or not Matthew Stafford can play an accurate brand of football, passing the football when he does have time to throw the pigskin. He's just got to get it done with the targets that he has this year. Uh, as far as that draft is concerned, real quick, I thought it was maybe B minus C plus. I thought other than Hawkinson, they were a little bit weak in the opening couple of picks. I thought their draft got better as the draft moved on. 
uh, for Detroit. But again, probably closer to a B minus than a C plus. Then look at the schedule. Final ingredient in the mix. They better beat Arizona out of the blocks in week one. They're a one and a half point road favorite over the Cardinals. If they lose that, the psyche for this team might go south. And there's a real good shot. They not only start 0-4 uh, before the bye week, but maybe even like 0-6, 1-6 of their first seven games. Take a look at that schedule when you get a chance from games two through game seven. There's not a lot of confidence that Detroit's going to win more than a game or two, if that. So when you add it all up, I look at this team's schedule before and after uh, the first half of the season finishes up, and I'm thinking, you know what? This team's probably going to win six games. Look for a 6-10 and ten season. The division that they're in is obviously tough. And if you can find that seven out there somewhere, I would recommend playing on the under, but mostly it's six and a half. And at this point, we're going to pass at six and a half. We think they win six games, maybe an outside shot at winning seven games if they start the season okay. And again, there's been plenty of teams that I've talked about that we've told you what our bets are over under. There's been plenty of teams where we said we got to pass. Maybe we're this close to making a play. And what we'll do after we're done with all the thumbnail sketches, we have the NFC to finish up. Uh, we'll tell you again, we'll recap where our bets are, the teams we're passing on, the teams where we're real close to making a play. And when that time comes, as we get closer to the preseason, closer to August, if at any time we add a team like Detroit, if we decide to jump in playing under, we'll let you know the day that we make that play on that day's video. So uh, be sure to watch the videos for that all summer long. Our next team, our next thumbnail sketch, by the way, we stay in the NFC North with the Green Bay Packers. Probably going to be on Friday in all likelihood, excuse me, on Saturday rather than Friday in all likelihood with Green Bay. And then after that, we'll finish up the division with the Minnesota Vikings. All right, again, don't forget, before we get to the free pick, WNBA six-unit elite level play, first one of the season, goes on Thursday, available at the same time as my baseball heavy hitter on Thursday, 11.30 a.m. Eastern time. Let's go for the 2-0 sweep on Thursday. Thursday. Now let's get to our free pick for Thursday's card. We're going to turn to the NHL. No premium pick tonight in the NHL game five as the series moves back to Boston, but we can't recommend laying a buck 55 or so, which is where this number is right now as I speak. I like the Blues in this spot uh, for an opinion of free pick, and here's why. If you look at game three, when they came back to St. Louis, they were off the big win in Boston, even up the series. They came out and they were like being way too aggressive, more than they should be. And this is an aggressive hockey team. And they were even more aggressive than they should have been. And it looked like they got caught up in the emotion of the whole thing. You know, first home game in St. Louis in the Stanley Cup Finals in, what, 49 years. And they looked like they got caught up in it. And after about, oh, seven, eight minutes, ten minutes of the first period, you could see they were not the team that was likely to win that hockey game. They came out in game four. They got back to St. Louis Blues hockey, which means punishing, but not crazy not over aggressive. They were aggressive in the way that suits them best. And what they did is they made, they rendered this Boston defense even thinner. Uh, you saw what happened to Chara. He gets injured. He's out in all likelihood. They're listing him as out at least on Thursday night. The defensemen are thin on the Boston's uh, side of the ice. And I think that's going to hurt him here. I think St. Louis has found what they need to do. Again, don't get over aggressive, but play a physical brand of hockey. So we're going to recommend to play on St. Louis plus plus $1.35 in Thursday's Game 5 in Boston. Right, that's going to do it for us today. Listen, if you like these videos, uh, be sure to click on that thumbs up button. Be sure to subscribe. We do appreciate those who have done so thus far. I'm Scott Sprites for DocSports.com. Let's put Thursday in the win column. We'll be right back here Friday, no later than 5 a.m. Eastern, 2 a.m. Pacific.